right, number three, we're doing some operations with equations. Okay, so we're going to add on the first one. So f of x Okay, so we can just leave it like that. Um, and then what are the restrictions? So on this one, that would have to happen. And on this one, we would not allow it to be 3. So 3 is in there. So we could state this. something like that, where x is anything bigger or equal to negative 2, any real number except for 3, or something like that. Division. Would look like that. And again, we're talking about these restrictions. Okay, so we are not allowed to have those values for the negative 2, anything lower on that, and we can't have 3 ever exist. Okay, number four, we have to find two functions that would add. So part A, you could have very uh, varied examples. So anything that would add, so we could say f of x could be x squared plus 6x, and g of x could be 6x plus 20. Doesn't matter, whatever I do, but as long as... I make sure when I add those together, they make that. And now I have to make two functions that would multiply. So let's say f of x was x plus 10, and g of x was x plus 2. Um, when I would multiply those, you can see that that would foil and work to get me the age function. Okay, composite functions, input, output. Okay, so the first one I have to do, what is the g of negative 3? says that the f is the line. So there we go. We got them labeled. So g at negative 3 would be right there. So it's an output of 2. So now f of 2, so I go to the f line. So at 2, the f is at 3 f of 3 so that would be right here so 3 and a half so g at 3 and a half would be about right here so that would be at an output of 2 Negative 2 on the F, so negative 2, it's at 1, so now F at 1 is 2.5. Okay, so we have to do three things here, so G at negative 1 is first, so right here, it's 0. 
f at 0, so the line at 0 is at 2, and now the line at 2 is right here, the line at 2 is at a height of 3. And this one, so the output is 3, what is the input? So I'm going to go to the F line. So here the output is 3, therefore the input was 2. Okay, now G of 3. So I'm plugging 3 into that function, which is 7. So now I'm plugging 7 into the F function. So plug 4 into the F function. 5, and then plug 5 into the G. Okay, plug 5 into the F function. Now plug 6 into the F function. Okay, G of 3. So plug 3 in to the G, I get 7. Now I have to go back into the G and plug 7 in. Okay, the next input that into the F. So that's the F function. So I'm inputting that function in there. So I get that as a final answer. Now I'm using an input of f and I'm going into the g. So the g function says input squared minus 2. And that's my input. So on this, I'm just going to FOIL. So when I FOIL, I get... And then I can't forget to subtract 2. Okay, last question. Graph G of F of X. So that's my input. Oh, I just did this one. That's this one. So what do I know about that? It's a quadratic. It has moved left one, down two, There's my starter, and it's a 1x squared. So I know that I have an over-up that's basic. I also know my y-intercept is negative 1. There's my problem. Graph this composite, so I'm plugging the f function into the h function. So the h function is the square root of something, and now I'm inputting. 
that's what I'm inputting. So this is a radical. So that's the shape of a radical. It has shifted left one. Now I'm going to go over one, up one. And then I'm going to go over four, up two. Compare the domains of these two functions. So this is the one we just did. Okay, and so we have to have a domain bigger than negative 1 or equal to negative 1, like that. But if we do it the other way, so we're plugging the h function into the f function. So that's my function, so I'm input plus 1. So what am I inputting? The h function. So that now on this one, it's a radical, and then this has made it go up one. So on this, that's what it would look like. And so thinking about that radical, right, zero is the lowest value for that 